Welcome to my black talk. Today we are going to discuss different nuclei of the spinal cord. Actually, we divide the spinal cord into two regions, white matter and the gray matter. In the gray matter, you will see three different horns or you can say collar, posterior or you can say dorsal, second one is the lateral, third one is the anterior or you can say ventral. So if you see here, like first one is the dorsal or you can say posterior, posterior horn. Second one is the lateral horn. And third one is the ventral or you can say anterior horn. So if you see here like this one, this is the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. This is the lateral horn and this is the ventral horn. So these are basically the three horns. And uh, keep remember that the each one is in pair. Dorsal is in pair, lateral is in pair, and ventral is in pair. So, actually, uh, we know that they, we divide the nervous system into two components. So, if you see here, like this one, here is the nervous system. We divide the nervous system into two. Central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Okay, we further categorize the peripheral nervous system into two components. So if you see like this one, so this is the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Somatic nervous system is actually voluntary and autonomic nervous system is actually involuntary that is not in our control and autonomic nervous system is further categorized into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. Now, if you see that the in the somatic nervous system and the in the autonomic nervous system, you will see two most important things. First thing is the afferent and the second thing is the efferent pathway afferent pathway that carry message toward the central nervous system uh, like brain and spinal cord and efferent pathway carry message away from the brain and the spinal cord. So the, uh, these two afferent and efferent pathway will be present in the somatic that is in voluntary and also present in the autonomic. Actually their uh, somatic nervous system has its own afferent and efferent pathway and autonomic nervous system has its own afferent and efferent pathway. So if you see here, like, uh, first of all, I'm talk about the somatic nervous system. So first component is the afferent that carry message towards the central nervous system. So when the message uh, comes to the central nervous system, then you will see it will goes towards the dorsal or you can say posterior horn of the spinal cord. So this is actually the afferent pathway of the somatic nervous system or you can also say that it is sensory, sensory pathway actually that carry message toward the central nervous system. Okay, now this is for the somatic and now you also see the afferent pathway for the somatic so that will carry message away from the central nervous system and it will goes from the ventral or the anterior horn of the spinal cord. So this is actually the efferent pathway or you can say motor, motor pathway that carry message away from the central nervous system. So now this is for the somatic nervous system. Keep remember these two horn dorsal and the ventral is for the somatic nervous system that is voluntary in nature. Okay, now what about the autonomic that is involuntary? It has also two afferent and afferent pathway. So if you see like lateral horn, so this is actually re related to the autonomic nervous system and in this case you also see the afferent and the efferent different pathway and this is for the auto 
autonomic nervous system okay so hope so you got the point next we will discuss the posterior horn so actually you will see different nuclei nuclei are basically the collections of the cell body in the central nervous system brain and spinal cord if you see the collections of the cell body in the peripheral nervous system then it is called the ganglia okay so first nuclei in the posterior horn if you see like this one that is actually present at the margin so that's why it is actually called the posterior marginal nucleus this is the case one so this is actually the posterior marginal nucleus of the that actually received the sensory information okay next if you see the next nuclei that is present in the dorsal or you can say posterior horn so that's one is next one is the substantia gelatinosa so this is the second case and if you see here this is the substantia gelatinosa that is actually present all over the spinal cord and next nucleus is the if you see like this one this is the actually called the nucleus propius nucleus propius so if you see this is the nucleus propius okay and this is also actually present all over the spinal cord and last one is this one this is actually called the nucleus dorsalis of clark i'm saying nucleus dorsalis of clark so if you see like this is the nucleus dorsalis of clark other name for this nucleus is actually the if you see here this one thoracic nu nucleus and but there is a difference this nucleus is actually specific present in the specific part of the spinal cord and that is actually present from the c8 component to the l3 component c8 component of the spinal cord or segments to the l3 segment so this is all about the posterior horn next we will discuss the lateral horn so that is actually present at the lateral side keep in remember as we discuss lateral horn is for the autonomic nervous system that is parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system okay if you see like two nuclei for the lateral and that is actually present in the lateral horn so if we see that this one this is actually that is present at the lateral side it is called the intermedio lateral part or you can say nuclei that is intermedio why do we call it intermedio because it is actually present between the dorsal and the ventral horn okay this is actually the intermedio why do we call it lateral because it is present at the lateral side and then it is actually then the next one is actually called the intermedio medial part or you can say nuclei so this is actually two you will see two parts in the lateral horn first one if you see like first one is the inter medio lateral and second if you see like that is actually present in the inter medio medial so intermedio medial you will see that it is actually present at the different components okay first thing is the from the t1 to the l2 thoracic to the lumbar region and that region is specific for the sympathetic nervous system so this is actually specific for the sympathetic nervous system 
sympathetic nervous system that is actually present from the T1 to the L2 region. Next, if you see S2 to S4, that region is specific for the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. So here are basically the two systems that is present in the intermedial lateral. Intermedial medial that is actually present this one. That is actually medial to the this one lateral nuclei. So that intermediate medial this you will see the most important thing in the is the interneuron or you can say internuncial neurons actually present in this region. So it is actually the internuncial neuron or you can say interneuron or you can say relay neuron whatever. So this is actually the intermediate medial. Okay. And that region is specific for the autonomy. Next is the anterior. That is actually the for the motor pathway or you can say efferent pathway of the somatic nervous system. So if you see here like this is for the somatic as I uh, said that it is for the somatic nervous system. It means it is for the skeletal muscles because the skeletal muscles are voluntary in nature. So skeletal muscles. And in this case, you will see two most important neurons in the motor. So actually, we categorize the motor neuron into two. Alpha neuron versus gamma neuron. Actually, alpha neuron is large in size as compared to the gamma neuron. Alpha neuron supply nerve to the its muscle. And what part of the muscles? Extra fusel muscle fiber. So this is for the extra fusel muscle fiber. That is supply. That is actually the main component. Extra fusel muscle fiber are basically the uh, large in amount and actually the main component that are actually involved in the contractions of the muscle. And gamma neuron is the supply intra fusel muscle fiber. And in that case, you will see that it is not actually uh, contribute major role in the contraction of the muscle. Okay. Next, we also uh, categorize anterior uh, nuclei into different regions. So first one is the, if you see that medial part. So in the medial, you will see like this one. First one is the medial, second one is the lateral and third one is the, if you see, like third one is the central, okay. Medial, medial, you, if, we, uh, if I talk about the medial, medial nuclei or the medial portion is actually present all over the spinal cord. So this is actually a uh, whole length of whole is spinal cord that is present in the all uh, all over the length of the spinal cord okay and you will see it is actually involved to supply the nerve to the axial muscles that is present at the axial side of the body so this is actually supply nerve to the axial part axial muscles so axial muscles like the muscles of the neck, muscles of the trunk that is actually present at the central. As you know that this is the person and this person if you see like the central portion is the axial portion and and second uh, the part that is away from the central region is the appendicular. Okay. Axial muscle. Now we actually further categorize medial into two. So if you see like this one. These two are basically the hero medial portion and this is actually the posterior medial segment. So if you see like this is the anterior medial and this is actually the posterior medial nucleus. Okay. Next is the lateral. Lateral is actually uh, present in two regions, cervical and the lumbar. Similar is that you also see this is the, this uh, nucleus is actually present at the cervical region 
or you can say lumbar okay now this actually supply nerves to the appendages limbs okay this is for the limbs we categorize it into three later if you see like first portion that is actually present at the anterior side you see that is called the antero lateral next is the posterior lateral that is after the antero lateral nucleus and last that it is actually called the post posterior lateral that is further behind the posterior lateral so we, you, you see that first component is the antero lateral second is the posterior lateral third is the post posterior lateral component so you see first thing antero lateral antero lateral supply to the limbs okay upper and the lower limbs what part of the uh, actual i am talking about the uh, what part of the upper limbs and what part to of the lower limb so actually antero lateral nucleus supply if i if talk about the upper uh, upper limbs then i should say that it supply shoulder and the and the arm so this is the shoulder and this is the arm that supply and if i talk about if, if i talk about the lower limb then it will supply the gluteal region and the thigh so here is for the antero lateral side then posterior lateral posterior lateral supply to the forearm and if i talk about the lower limb then it will supply to the leg that is actually present below the knee knee okay last is the post posterior lateral that actually supply to the hands that is actually after the that actually start after the wrist region and in the if i talk about the lower limb then you see that the foot that is actually after the ankle that is actually the part of the foot that foot is supplied by the post posterior lateral okay last is the central so you feel in the central you will see two important nerves nucleus first one is the phrenic nerve and second one is the accessory nerve okay phrenic nerve nucleus and if you see here like these two portion is for the phrenic and the accessory phrenic nerve is actually supplied to the diaphragm so the keep remember the, uh, if i write it here phrenic nerve is for supply dia from okay and if i talk about the accessory uh, actually accessory has two roots spinal roots and the cranial roots so if you see here like the accessory nerve has two roots spinal and the cranial it actually drive from the nucleus of the accessory nerve okay now in the spinal region you will see the arise of the one accessory nerve okay and in the cranial that is actually the nucleus of ambiguous that is actually present at the medulla oblongata so in that from the medulla oblongata you will see also the arise of the another nerve and these two both nerves joints and you will see that if i say that the spinal nerve is for the supply two most important muscles sternocleidomastoid muscles and the trapezius muscle so sternocleidomastoid muscles and the trapezius muscle is actually supplied by the spinal root of the accessory nerve and if i talk about the cranial then it actually supplies to the larynx pharynx and the uh, palate of the mouth so, so this is all about the nuclei of the spinal cord if you have any question then you may ask in the comment section thank you